This episode of Good Investing Talks is supported by Interactive Brokers. If you're ever looking for a broker, Interactive Brokers is the place to go. I personally use their service because I think they have a great selection of stocks and markets you can access. They have super fair prices and a great tracking system to track your performance. If you want to try out the offer of Interactive Brokers and support my channel, please click on the link below. There you will be directed to Interactive Brokers and can get an idea what they offer for you. I really like their tool and it's a high recommendation by me. And now enjoy the video. Hello audience. Hello Rocher. It's great to have you here today. Um, Rocher is a good German investor. Um, you're in Frankfurt at the moment. Exactly. Yeah, it's great to have you here. Um, Let's start with taking a look back and you have this 15 years of history of running a fund successfully. I am also happy to show the chart of the uh, fund for the people who want to get an idea how he performed since inception. And in this charts, you see many break-ins and we are currently in a phase where we also have a certain stock market break-in with the Ukraine crisis and uh, inflation worries. Um, Maybe let's take a step back and I want to ask you in the last 15 years as a fund manager, and if you remember your chart, um, what crises have you experienced then? What kind of crises were they? Maybe you can say some of the crises you've, you've lived through. I can do. And uh, 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 once again, hello. Uh, <laughs> nice to meet you again, Tillman. Um, and to answer your question, I think uh, I would even start before the fund has been launched because I'm. Uh, active in the stock market since almost a quarter of a century or so, roughly 25 years. And as you mentioned, in this time, uh, you experience a lot. You see good times and bad times in terms of increasing or decreasing stock prices or stock markets. And um, of course, I have my experience is affected by the bigger crises. Uh, I would uh, underline maybe... Um, three or four, uh, uh, I would uh, focus first on the, 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 the burst of the bubble at the beginning of the century, which is something people currently remember a lot because the situation could be similar. Uh, we had also a bubble in the tech sector, like we had uh, maybe in the US too in 2020, 2021. And we had a, a long beer market, uh, which we did not have since then. We had a beer market over a few years, which was really, a, I would say, a dramatical experience for many investors. Um, similar experience I had also in the uh, financial crises, 2008, 2009. It was not that long. Uh, you only had to uh, to to, to uh, survive a beer market of, uh, I would say, one and a half a year. But uh, it was also uh, affected with, I would say, some some strong decreases all over the market. Uh, but also in the recent past, we had some, uh, I would say, um, uh, stress tests, uh, which we have experienced. One was really, really or both have been really short, I would to say. The one is uh, at the end of 2018, the stock market has plunged only in a few weeks. I would say the, the fourth quarter of 2018, stock market has been developed very uh, negative. This is um, uh, uh, relevant for the current situation, maybe also because the reason uh, in these days uh, has been uh, fear of uh, increasing. Uh, interest rates. So something we also discuss uh, currently, we have discussed it a little bit less since we had turned the focus on Ukraine. And the last, uh, I would say, negative ex uh, um, experience I made uh, was, of course, the corona crisis in February and March 2020, where the stock market has also plunged in, in four weeks, uh, roughly 30, 35 percent. And what I can uh, assume to all this I would say negative experience, negative in terms of uh, decreasing prices. Um, normally, they end. They, 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 and uh, you never know the end during the, this time. So, uh, from my view, from my view, point of view, is this uh, important for any investor of a not as a retail or institutional investor that you keep in mind that beer markets are not the end of the world. So uh, it's, it's part of the stock market that, that prices can also decrease. And uh, during these days, 
this does not feel good, but it's part of the game, and you have to uh, you have to to experience it. That's all. But maybe this answers a little bit your question. Yeah. One crisis you even like didn't mention was the Greece crisis, the debt crisis. Uh, it is not like this question wasn't about collecting all the crises you've experienced, but it's interesting, like in hindsight, that it doesn't matter that much anymore. Um, how does this? How have this crisis shaped your impact or shaped or impacted your style of investing? Is there anything you've changed substantially after the crisis? No. No, I have to say I, I, I'm doing this um, stuff together with my my partner and fellow uh, Christoph uh, Christoph Frank, and uh, we are really focused on, on on a clear investment scheme that is long only, so that we have uh, I would say clearly uh, impacts uh, of the markets. Uh, we do not try to to neutralize the market effects. We do not any market timing so it's more or less automatically that you have in such days like i have uh, mentioned uh, decreasing uh, net asset value in the fund too and um, what, what, what we are doing uh, is uh, focused more uh, on, on the companies we are doing a, a clear bottom-up approach we are really strong believers in the in, in, in the system where we uh, uh, focus on the companies and uh, on the quality of the stocks and the companies. And of course, uh, in, in such days, like you mentioned in 2011 or even in 2018, we have all, mentioned all these uh, negative uh, phases. Uh, also good companies are affected and also uh, cheap stock can become even more cheaper. Uh, but um, our approach is not to optimize the market timing i think we, we would uh, it would cost more than we would get as return and um, the only one thing i can tell you that i took as a lesson that was also part of your question is um, that you learn to stay calm even in crisis situations uh, as you mentioned you added 2011 we could Uh, a lot at a lot of more small situation for example in the year 2016 we had several experiences we had the the, the brexit votum in uk we had the trump election in usa we had uh, warriors about the is italian fiscal situation and all these uh, situations led to short-term plunges of the market and uh, you, you you cannot uh, be safe on this you have to experience that uh, markets uh, increase and decrease and um, you should not uh, from my perspective you should not uh, focus uh, on your um, uh, your investment style on these short term developments to answer your question um, no i think we we, we learned to stay calm but we didn't change uh, the investment systems uh, for sure we did not do this because we think a good investment system should not be changed uh, after a, a bull or beer market Have you shifted to certain stocks more, like more quality um, after the crisis or was it already in your approach? Um, I would say uh, to, to argue a little bit with our investment style in general, uh, uh, we, are, uh, we have a flexible system, so we are not pure growth investors or pure value investors. Uh, we try to, to, to uh, put both worlds uh, together, both approaches. And um, if I look to the past, for example, the fund uh, had, um, for example, a stronger uh, value approach at the end of the uh, zero decade. So in the years 2007, 2008, 2009, we had more uh, value uh, concentration, so-called value, because this is not a crystal clear in uh, uh, what is a value stock and what is a growth stock, we know this. And uh, during the years, I would say from 2015, 2020, 21, we had clearly a growth uh, focus uh, in, our, um, in our strategy. And... Um, But this was not decided top down. This is always uh, uh, derived uh, when we uh, judge all the uh, single stocks in a bottom up approach. is is really important to underline this. So the 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 allocation 
is not uh, the decision. The allocation is a result of a lot of single decisions on uh, several stocks. Um, and uh, to answer your question, uh, Obviously, uh, you have some changes in a flexible system. Uh, there are times where you should be more invested in growth stocks, and there are times where you should be more invested in value stocks. There are times where you should invest more in bigger stocks or from bigger companies, and there are times where small caps are uh, more interesting. And um, we are focused and we are not flexible on the on, on the core market. We we, we just uh, uh, only look at uh, the German market because we are local players. We have some local knowledge, and we think it's clear. Uh, it's important to have a clear field where you act. But within this field, uh, of course, we are flexible. And uh, yes, uh, these uh, these proportions change. So maybe outline a bit why you're just focusing on Germany and also on companies that take a lot of the revenue in Germany. Yeah, uh, I would say yes to the first and no to the second. Uh, let me please argue. Okay, um, the, 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 um, our, our focus is not necessary. We, we work also with a quantitative system. We could also use, I would say, for the US market or for the French market or for the Greece market, whatever. And whenever you have solid figures to judge, uh, we could do this also for, for stocks from other uh, countries. But... Uh, in Germany, we can also add uh, our local expertise. You have to know Christoph and me, both of us, we have each of us, uh, I would say a three digit number each year of meetings with companies in this market. So we have a really clear local access to the management board, to the deciders in the company. I would say in Germany, you have roughly about 800 listed stocks. And I would say, during the last decades, we have met almost, or, or, almost all companies. Uh, there are lots of companies which are at the stock market since 20, 25 years, and uh, we have seen several managements changing. Uh, so uh, th th this experience and this knowledge, um, we would not have the same way like we, when we would um, judge Vietnamese or Chinese stocks, for example. This is an... Uh, I would say an advantage we want to use in addition to the quantitative system. Um, the, the second question was uh, that you say we focus on uh, on companies which make a lot of their revenues and their business in Germany. And I would say this is not the case. I would think we have really a few decades of strong globalization during the last um, uh, decades and um, what we have seen is there are no more really typical Germany companies a few yes more or less but most are clearly European companies most uh, and very many are really uh, global companies just to give you an example a prominent example if you look on Adidas and Puma which are both headquartered in Herzogenaurach, which is really a small German city. And the, 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 the headquarters are close to each other. You know the history. But uh, they're doing almost all their revenues abroad Germany. They do almost all the, 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 the production uh, abroad Germany. It's not a German company, not, not, neither Adidas nor Puma. And you have this with a very lot of companies. You see this currently because... Um, Many, many, many companies have some problems with their supply chain, and then you can see you see the dependent how dependent they are uh, on how it works in China or Taiwan or whatever. And uh, this is a globalized world, and um, in Germany you have the headquarters, but often not more. You, you normally have really a strong international impact. For example, last example, Deutsche Telekom, you would assume this is really a German company. But I think the, the, the US business is really very relevant for their figures and also for the, for, for, the, for the development of the share price. So I do not see this as a local companies. But we, uh, we, we, we uh, are happy um, to have the possibility to meet these companies, the leaders here, and to have a 
strong uh, uh, access to the companies. For these reasons, we focus on Germany. And it's also, uh, maybe I can add this, uh, a question of credibility. Um, I think uh, if I tell uh, uh, to our investors uh, that we have some knowledge on the German market, they would say clearly yes. If I say, okay, tomorrow we launch also a, a Vietnamese fund, they would say, hey, what can you do better in Vietnam than other guys do? For a reason. You mentioned these meetings you have with CEOs, board members, and experts around the firms. How are they usually structured? What are the topics you discuss there? What interests you in these discussions? Um, is there a usual or is it also very dependent on the company? Yes, it is dependent, of course, but uh, there are, uh, I would say, some regular uh, uh, ways uh, how to meet. Uh, I have to underline during the last two years, this has been <laughs> developed a little bit different. Like our whole life, we have uh, switched much more to the digital world. Like we discussed here in, in a video conference, we did it also a lot during the last two years with companies. Um, And uh, many conferences, which are often organized by banks, but also are organized by other firms, uh, which are focused on this, um, have been set up in a digital way during the last two years. So very often companies have presented in, 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 on the screen and you have the possibility to ask in a virtual conference or in the chat function like we have here. And, and uh Even the capital market days, uh, normally a listed company does one time a year, a capital market day, where they invite analysts and investors to have a closer look on, on the environment and uh, see the, the buildings and so on. Um, this, this has switched to, to digital uh, CMDs uh, over the last two years. But now this is switching again. I would say, uh, assume that we have in 2022 much more Uh, physical meetings. Uh, last week, for example, I have take part on uh, took part on a on a uh, on, on a conference, analog conference in Hamburg, where I have met during two days. I would say roughly 20 board members of different companies. They had one-on-one -on -one meetings uh, in a hotel room where we have discussed. And this was another question of your uh, of you. Um, what is uh, the content of such meetings? Uh, this is clearly dependent on, on, on the investor's approach, I would say, and also on the company's approach. Um, we, Christoph and me, we are clearly focused on the figures. We, are, we like to uh, judge by figures and we do only invest if the figures convince us. So we discuss a little bit more on figures than maybe than others, I would assume. Uh, other investors, uh, I would say, act more discretionary, they judge more the business models and the future potential of the business scheme. And um, so maybe this is more a little bit more on the products. But of course, we try to, 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 to put everything in also in our conversations. We also have to judge the market situation of the company, how uh, uh, I, I mentioned current situation, uh, which, which is really often part of the discussion in 2022 and also during the last year already, is inflation and the supply chain. Uh, I would say this is crystal clear, the most urgent topic for many uh, companies. How do they handle increasing uh, costs and how can they transfer, uh, transport this to their customers? Are they strong enough to rise their prices? And this uh, is something you can go into deeper into the details with the companies normally. Interesting. Um, you also mentioned that you have the network outside of the companies uh, where you not only talk to the board, but also get background or information outside. How have you built this network? When you are on, on, in the job since 20 years, of course, you, you meet a lot of people and uh, you are in touch and uh, it's just I, i would say it's it's it is it's a normal consequence of doing this professional business and more since more than 20 years i'm not that young like uh, you and even other <laughs> anymore so uh, I, uh, i have uh, in contrast the advantage uh, to have a lo lot of uh, uh, i would say experience in this market and then you I would say more or less by nature, you build up a network. But to, to, to bring this in, in, into, uh, into uh, the wide um, 
dimension, I would say it is more important to judge the companies than the network. I, I like the network and I'm, I, I, I work uh, with uh, knowledge outside, but we clear, crystal clear focus on, on judging companies and shares. And uh, the network, I would say, helps, but not more. If there is a non-German investor approaching you to ask you questions about the German stock market, are there any key topics you have to explain them because they natu naturally don't understand them because Germany is different uh, for investors? Yeah, yeah. Interesting question. I think on the one side is what I mentioned. These are not, I would say, local players. So if you invest in say Siemens, for example, or Bayer, these are international companies where you have, I would say, a broad field where these companies act. But of course, some things um, on some issues are typical Germany, also for the German stock market. A typical um, thing I discuss with uh, potential or existing investors, not, which are not in Germany, if they invest into a, a product of the German market, um, they, they have to make more or less some compromises because there are a few industries we do not have. We do not have an oil industry. We do not have any gold minings. We do not have uh, several uh, uh, things, uh, several industries, and, but not too much. And, and I have to say, um, in these days where people uh, are not uh, that uh, happy to invest in coal and oil and also all, all this uh, stuff. Um, it's not a disadvantage that Germany has no oil companies, for example. But this is in contrast to other European, uh, I would say, uh, nations. And um, what I also have to say, um, that for this reason, I think you can do a, a single uh, solution for the German market. As a, the stock market is broad enough that you have, I would say, most industries. And not all, as I mentioned, but a lot of. This is much easier than when you uh, judge uh, really small uh, nations. Do not want to blame someone. But, but just for example, Portugal or Greece or Poland are smaller. And then you have not that broad uh, range of uh, different uh, companies like you have in, the, in Germany. Uh, what you also have as a disadvantage in Germany, you should know the share of the listed companies in contrast to the, to the economic strength, uh, strength of the nation is, I would say, improvable. Uh, um, For example, in contrast, if you compare it with, with Scandinavia, with Switzerland, or with UK, they have much more listed companies. And I'm a little bit jealous on this. For example, the Swiss guys, they really have lots of listed companies for a small company. But maybe this will change in the future. We will see. What companies would you love to invest in if they were listed that are currently not listed? If there are some names come to your you, mind. You're asking for companies which we are missing, which are not listed yeah, uh, yeah. yet. I cannot say this because uh, it's not uh, that we are uh, dependent on business model. Uh, but, but I can give you maybe another example. We had, for example, uh, in the first seven or eight years as the fund was launched, we have been invested, I think, nonstop in uh, Uh, WMF, which is a manufacturer of uh, some several kitchen uh, aids uh, and uh, coffee machines and so on. And um, the, the, the uh, company has been delisted, uh, has been bought by private equity, which is not that rare in Germany over the last uh, 10 years. And um, this was something uh, we would have also to to remain invested in these days. But uh, this is just an example. Normally, I would say the, the, the market is broad enough and I do not really miss something. If you think about the German stock market, Wirecard is also a topic that has been <laughs> come. Yeah, it's, it's hard to find the right words for Wirecard. It's a strange topic uh, of the recent German stock market history. If a foreign investor would approach you and ask you for areas in the German stock market, he or she should stay away. What areas would you say that are just like not that of high of quality, like, like not comparing to Dubai card, but you have this kind of big fraud case still in mind? Yeah. Okay. Um, 
I have to underline we have never been invested in buyer card. Maybe I should uh, mention this in advance. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, of course, I have uh, uh, had always also a view on buyer card, um, especially in this day when the uh, share price of buyer card really has skyrocketed. And um, you have sometimes to explain to investors why you are not invested in this company. Um, Why were you not invested in Wirecard? What were you using? I would say a, a lot of questions uh, have been raised in these days and have not been answered yet. I think uh, the, 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 the easy answer is also that, that the share price of Wirecard was not really cheap, but also I would say the, 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 the financial uh, reporting was a little bit I would say somewhat strange. And the answers and the way how they acted with critics was never ever so i would say uh, convincing um, you have to know uh, the part in, in germany wirecard has been discussed since the first time i would say they have been listed by a shell company in 2005 or 2006 i don't I think 2005 and the first time they have been really discussed hard was 2008 so This was long before it really, uh, I would say, uh, it bursted. Um, to come back to your question, I would answer more in general than in, in the civil case. I think fraud happens not only in Germany, but in many countries. You have also a lot of fraud uh, discussions on bigger companies also in the US, in the UK, in China. So we should not uh, say this, this is a dedicated German problem from my point of view. Uh, also not an Austrian problem too. Um, but what I would say in general, it's just, a, it's just an easy rule. You should all, only invest in companies you really understand. You have to understand what they are doing and what, how they earn their money. And this is, I would say, something where you could have had some problems in Wirecard to answer in this example. And it, you see this in, in many for, big fraud cases. If you remember 20 years ago in the US, Enron, a really ex, a very good example, I would say even bigger than Wirecard. Um, if you have asked me 20 years ago if I could explain what Enron is really doing, I could not explain it to you. And uh, if you ask me how is Wirecard exactly earning this money and these margins four times higher than the, 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 the other companies. It's always hard to understand. So it's, it's helpful. Uh, no, no, no one can be, uh, can, can say, no investor can say that he and she is always sure on fraud. But it's helpful to understand the business, to try to understand. And of course, the second uh, protection is diversification in the, in the portfolio. If you go all in in one stock, uh, this is always dangerous. To follow up on this, which areas of the investing universe you have, you, are you, don't understand, you don't understand? Which are the areas where you say, we, it's interesting businesses, but we can't understand them? Yeah, okay. Uh, I have to say, Christoph and me, we are both are generalists. So if we go in deep details on, I would say, the, anyway, chemical business, renewable business, or even the, the consum consumer business, normally I would say some experts like, like sales side analysts always have a better, better knowledge on the single industry. So our approach is not uh, that we say we have the best knowledge on a single uh, sector. Uh, but um, our, our, our need is that, um, that, that, that uh, the business can be explained, as I mentioned, and also that the success of the company can be seen also already in the figures. We are not doing any VC business. We are not invest in companies which start to earn in five or six years uh, their money. Uh, so um, what we are doing, we invest more or less in all sectors, but some, I would say, are difficult. I'll give you an example. The typical biotech company starts to generate sales in five or six years. And uh, As an investor who is focused on, I would say, solid earnings and retaining uh, earnings, um, this is not typical. So we are 
more or less, I would say, agnostic uh, to, to all industries. We, we look on everything, but if it's not built uh, by the, it's not visible by the figures, uh, we do not invest. And um, I would say the business model should be uh, comprehensive and should be to understand in each industry. And this is also, I would say, a need for investor relations to explain it to to not only to an expert, but also to, uh, I would say, a silly uh, investor like me, what is this company doing and how uh, is this company earning? Um, of course, sometimes people, uh, um, I would say, flee in technical discussions and say, okay, this uh, is really, uh, an, 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 I would say, an ankle uh, uh, technical approach, uh, which our uh, 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 which we have as the only one in the market, but then we want to see as, as a result as the earnings from this uh, from 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 this uh, advantage. Interesting. You have these two fund mandates. One is called Plato, uh, and one is called Mittelstand. I just like my name name the short topics that are in in the names of the funds. What is your definition of Mittelstand and what is it, why is this mandate different or how is this mandate different to the other mandate you have? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have no clear, n n not that we have a clear, um, I would say, uh, franchise that we say, okay, everything uh, below one billion market cap is uh, a small cap and oh, uh, everything above one billion just for example, is uh, large cap. This would be too technical. But in indeed, uh, the key difference between our both products is that the the the, um, the, 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 the the second fund which we have launched uh, much later is uh, focusing more on smaller companies. Um, it, also due to the fact that the fund is much smaller uh, and is more flexible in this, um, I would say uh, uh, we have the same strategy we, we we have the same market both uh, funds invest only in german companies and we use the same investment scheme but um, uh, we uh, focus a little bit more on the smaller companies in the one fund and a little bit more on the bigger and mid sized in the other one and um, of course there is an overlay of i would say 50 60 percent this is changing is changing and and uh, Uh, but um, I would say the the the, the PFP Aktien Mittelstand is a little bit uh, I would say uh, even more um, uh, uh, focused on the same strategy. It's more concentrated also, and um, uh, so um, you have uh, the impact a little bit stronger, positive and negative impacts, for example, of the developments of the companies. But uh, normally uh, both uh, funds uh, base on the same uh, or have the same basement is our knowledge on the German market. And what is your definition of Mittelstand and then for the smaller fund or? Uh, as I mentioned, we do not have, there are uh, companies uh, which generate sales uh, of more than a billion euro and uh, still uh, are, I would say, more or less Mittelstand uh, because uh, it, their whole attitude to the capital markets is a little bit more, I uh, would say, uh, Mittelstand focus. They are often, uh, Mittelstand is also something um, an expression which you use more often if um, the founders and the families uh, are more family owned. Um, I do not have a clear uh, binary, binary uh, judgment on this that I say this is black and white and this is Mittelstand and this is large cap. Um, uh, Mittelstand but by nature are more smaller companies, are more often uh, dominated by families as I mentioned and are also a uh, more often focused company with a uh, de de dedicated business uh, and not a con conglomerate. So you mentioned this orientation to the capital market. Uh, maybe this is also a thing. <laughs> it might be interesting if you want to understand the German capital market. Is it like in Mittelstands companies that have a huge family ownership? Is, it, is there a strong capital market orientation or are they more like... You have to build trust over time to get access and they aren't like really into presenting to the capital market that much. 
Yeah, but I think yes and no. I think uh, indeed, uh, in, con in, in contrast to, to the huge international companies, which are mostly part of the DAX in Germany, I would say many Mittelstand companies are not that familiar with the capital market and they, they, they act a little bit more cautious also in the, in, in the whole uh, uh, communication and in the, in the attitude to the financial market. They see, um, but uh, I have to say, uh, these companies which are listed of the Mittelstand are, always, are already the more progressive companies which have at least uh, a minor positive attitude, for, they would not be listed if this is not the case. And I think um, in Germany in general, I would say we have still to build up a little bit more uh, capital market culture. It's, I, I already mentioned uh, the difference to Scandinavia, UK, Switzerland, US, of course. Um, but I think this is development. I, if I remember 20 years ago, what I have seen from communication, what I have seen as standards, how to communicate with investors with the capital markets, I think we have a good development overall. I'm not that negative on this, but what I see is sometimes they are a little bit more cautious, but this is not a disadvantage in general because um, sometimes this is, goes along with, I would say, an attitude that The, the, the owners and the managers do not want to impress the capital markets over the next six months, but they, they want to develop the company over the next five or 10 years. And as an investor, as an, I would say, fundamental investor, I like this attitude. I do not want the companies to beat the expectation each quarter by nature. This is more or less, I would say, a game which you see sometimes also on Wall Street, but also in Germany, which is not uh, that uh, uh, fundamental uh, as I like it. What we want to have is that people really develop the companies. And these Mittelstand companies, I would say, especially if they are, partly owned by, uh, by the founder of families, um, this, uh, you, you see it often, this approach, and I like it. Maybe let's take a look at your portfolio now, and you sent me a chart I'm showing here um, that's listing your top 10 uh, positions. Um, but maybe zoom out a bit. How many positions do you usually have in your funds? Um, Yeah, in, in the DVS uh, concept plateau, we normally have, I would say, a broad range between 35 and 60 uh, companies. Currently, we have 54 uh, companies in the uh, in the portfolio. In the PFP Aktien Mittelstand Premium, um, we act more concentrated with normally less than 30 uh, stocks in the in, in the fund. And what you uh, have shown uh, now is uh, the, the top 10 holdings at the end of the year 2000. 21, um, which I would say uh, had uh, uh, in, in, at this day uh, less than 40% of the uh, of the fund, which is uh, in comparison with our uh, past, I would say was a less normally. I would say the top 10 holdings have roughly 45 up to 50% of the portfolio. Normally, we, we, we like uh, to, to, to have a clear clear invest, uh, but uh, the situation was a little bit different. So, uh, however, uh, this is uh, what, what, what you're referring to, yeah. How do you go about sizing? Why do you decide, like, for instance, a store has 4% and a Seve or 2G Energy you also don't have in the top 10 list or, like, Seve is in the top 10 list, are sized less? Uh, what are the factors that contribute to this maybe i explain a little bit more about our investment scheme uh, we, we, we really uh, as i mentioned uh, work with a with a quantitative approach which my partner has developed more than 25 years ago so it's a really uh, a, a long enduring system where we focus really on a lot of uh, Uh, financial figures and uh, ratios and um, we, we, we make a screening on the whole German market and um, then uh, the, the, the screening uh, filters uh, down to uh, I would say uh, investable uh, number of companies where we have to judge uh, then in detail and uh, to have or to look on the details and um, I would say uh, we work with a, with a scoring system it's, it's a binary system uh, that you say okay fits the score or fits not and the best 
score at all is zero, that uh, you have uh, no negative uh, breach uh, in the system. And if you have this uh, score like from, from zero, this would lead theoretically at least uh, to, to a high proportion in the fund uh, because you say, okay, this fits to our systems almost perfectly uh, right now. And um, uh, of course, this is um, the, 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 uh, the weights in the fund are um, a result of our personal, I would say, uh, view on the uh, on the stock and the, the existing chances. But of course, it's also, uh, I would say, uh, uh, development uh, is also a consequence of the market development. If you have, for example, I would say uh, 3% in a, in, in, a, in a company, of the fund in a company, and then the company and the share price develop very good and uh, doubles, and the rest is steady state, uh, ceteris paribus, uh, then the, 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 the share uh, of the fund is almost doubled uh, up to 6%. And um, this is something uh, which is also reflected. Uh, what we do not do is uh, automatical rebalancing, like some funds do, that they, they say, okay, we have 50 positions, each of 2%, and whenever something develops good, we cut it, and something develops bad, we, we, we bought instead. This is what we are not doing. So uh, what you see, the weights are also consequences of the share price developments. Is there also a thematic focus in the way you build your fund? Like you have, if you go through this top 10 list, there's Sto, there's uh, Verbio, there's also like uh, some energy names in your documents, or there's also like the digitization as a topic that's coming up with Adesso or Bechtle, or also mentioned, mach mentioned Machine. Is there, is it just like your system picks these names and they are generated by this? Or is it like that you also have There are interesting topics where we might see more growth as usual in Germany, so they become a... Hey, Tillman here. I'm sure you're curious about the answer to this question. But this answer is exclusive to the members of my community, Good Investing Plus. Good Investing Plus is a place where we help each other to get better as investors day by day. If you are an ambitious, long-term oriented investor that likes to share, please apply for Good Investing Plus. Just go to good-investing.net slash plus. You can also find this link in the show notes. I'm waiting for your application. And without further ado, let's go back to the conversation. Maybe from the list of this, this 10, top 10 positions, it sometimes feels a bit boring to look at your portfolio because it are like boring, planable companies. Like why are there no stocks of like, for instance, e-commerce, We had this interview with Home24 recently or other like Global Fashion Group or gaming companies in the space that might be also attractive investments. Yeah, uh, to, to, to uh, bring a little bit more light uh, in our uh, approach uh, to, to, to underline what we, what we like and what we do not like. In contrast to, to, to other stock pickers, I would say, because some are looking really on the, the best situation uh, that they uh, look uh, at the very beginning of a company development or in a, even in a turnaround situation where some uh, uh, fund managers uh, focus on company which have become very cheap and now everything is turning into the better situation. This is what we are clearly not doing. Um, say in a simple words, we invest in companies where we would enjoy that the next days are really similar to the last days. So all these companies are already in a good situation. We do not invest in loss-making companies, for example, and we do not invest in companies with uh, stressed balance sheets, with overloads of debt, for example. This is some. These are things we do not do. And we do not invest into story. I would say story companies, if you understand what I mean. It's, This is um, the company has not yet a business model, but they have an idea. Uh, so you have sometimes this on the stock market where the um, the company shifts their business extremely. Like for example, it is a boring uh, uh, real estate uh, holding, and uh, it may makes a decision to to change everything, and now to want they they want to uh, sell their uh, their. Um, 
uh, all, all the assets and now they want to um, to to invest in, in bitcoin or in in mining uh, infrastructure or whatever this would be clearly something we would not like we we would want to have really continuous uh, business we want to understand the business of the last years and we think that these companies are stable enough that they can continue also maybe this cuts a few opportunities maybe but uh, it's clearly cuts also the risks and at the end it's a, it's a game where you have to look on both so a hell of fresh or something wouldn't be part of your portfolio because like the criteria don't fit Currently, or so so far, the criteria have not fit. Yes, this is a, maybe an example. I would not say uh, for the future. A lot of things can change, of course. But um, with regards uh, to the current situation, non the bio, uh, I would say in this de uh, concrete uh, example, um, the uh, the valuation is not uh, that as we like to, and also the track record. Of the past, if uh, the company uh, will reach a situation that they really have earned for several years in a, in a substantial sustainable margin, this is different. So I cannot tell it for the future. As I mentioned, we are open-minded to everything, but uh, in in the past we have never invested in this company yet. To better understand this, so like a valuation approach where you just like focus on the unit economics and say if a certain growth happens this unit economics turns to very positive earnings isn't like a thing you do it's more like you look at the quantitative factors of the existing earnings uh for instance yes yes uh, you're right but i have to add we uh we are not a value fund uh, we have in our uh, in our uh, investment scheme uh, also a lot of growth figures uh, we, but we want to see the growth in the existing business and in, uh, which is a little bit different to the i would say to the story stocks where i said where everything will uh, skyrocket uh, over the next years but not yet in the past and uh I would say uh, uh, what we uh, are looking for is really um, a comfortable uh, compromise between value and growth. So you have a, a sustainable, uh, solid balance sheet and uh, not that many risks on, I would say, high debts, lots of goodwill and so on and so on, what you can uh, uh, have. Um, but uh, this in, in, in combination with a really... An, Uh, uh, steady growth is more important. Is, is, is it has not been strong growth, but a steady growth over many years. This is important for us. And overall, we, we want to have also that the stocks are, I would not say cheap, but affordable. That, 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 that For example, there was also one uh, name on this uh, investment strategy is called a GAP, a growth at reasonable price. This is a little bit like, like we are acting. I think uh, at the end, it's uh, we want to, we, we say uh, it is not, has to be cheap, but the price has to be justified. To follow up, <laughs> last question on this point. So you, you Does growth have to be profitable? Because sometimes if you grow, you have to invest a certain amount, but then you see it's okay. It's it's if it's growing, we see this scale effect hitting hitting in at a certain point. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, this is a good question. Uh, normally, this is a trail off. You often have in, 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 in if you uh, if you run a company, is exactly what uh, many companies have to decide. Shall I invest in marketing and then have less margin and so on and so on? I would say if I look in the consequence and what we have invested, um, uh, it, it is fine that companies invest a lot uh, in, in, in growth and have less margins, uh, but uh, at least the business should remain uh, profitable. Uh, this is what uh, what, what, what we, we, we think. Um, if uh, companies really invest that much uh, that they are creating huge losses this is not our uh, i would say typical invest great maybe let's take a look at two titles for the end um, let's start with store what is the company doing and why is it interesting for you as an investment yeah this is a construction supplier store is a, a I would say they, they make um, systems of um, 
building coatings, uh, so they uh, gain some profit on all this discussion on uh, reducing energy costs in the in, in, in the housing sector, and uh, they they they, they uh, distribute also on the building of new uh, of new buildings, but also on existing buildings. And what we have seen our our decision is. As I mentioned, not story driven, it's not top down on the sector. But what you see in this stock uh, is that you have really a, a solid and enduring and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, I would say, steady growth over the last years. Uh, I would say the company is uh, growing internally, not via MA. &A. And um, all this is, I would say, uh, Uh, combined also with, I would say, a uh, valuation which is not that high. You, you, you currently pay two times the, uh, the uh, have a price book ratio of around two, uh, which is, uh, I would say, uh, uh, not not that high. Also in comparison, the, 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 the market cap or the EV uh, with, with the sales is rather cheap in comparison. Uh, just to give you two examples um, on, on the valuation. Uh, so, so I would say it's a, it's a moderate price for a company with a good market position. And uh, it's a market uh, which where you can understand that the company will be able to increase over also uh, their earnings and their sales over the next years. Of course, they have also, like other companies, uh, some worries on their costs and their supply chain. But I would say this is something you have as normal currently. But if you would ask me to, to say what is currently a SWOT analysis, uh, I would also uh, underline this. But um, To come back to your question, I would say is a typical example which fits to our investment system. And maybe let's also take a look at Bechtle. Uh, why is it interesting for you as an investment and what is the company doing? Yeah, this is an IT uh, company, uh, which of the, one of the leading in Europe, I would say, with more than six billion uh, revenues a year. Um, we have it, the company, or the share in, in, in the portfolio, I think, since 10 years or something like this as a core position. And um, uh, a similar situation. Uh, you have a lot of digital, uh, you could also argue top down because you have a lot of digital in the in, in the. Uh, companies also in the public sector, uh, Bechtel is also uh, servicing the public sector uh, in, in, in a strong uh, intensive. And, and what we see is also since, I would say since 10th year, a really steady growth with, I would say, organically between five or 10 percent each year. Last year was, I think, seven percent organic growth, uh, mostly organic growth, and also improving um, uh, margins uh, over the years and uh, really a, a, a business where you can see uh, or where you can assume that it will not end this year uh, because the perspective is still there. And the valuation overall, I would say, is not cheap anymore. If you uh, just look on how the stock has developed over the last 10 years, it can't be cheap in all figures. But I would say it's still on a level where uh, you have also uh, some chance which we see. It's, it's, so uh, typical for us is not a, a company uh, which develops uh, in a skyrocketing uh, changing environment, but it's, um, I would say, in a constant way. This is something we like. Very interesting. Both companies have founder families behind them. Uh, maybe it's just me picking them out, but are founder families or people who just like stay behind the company and hold them for the long term an important factor in your investment decision? I would say it's not an important factor in our investment decision, but it happens really often. And it's uh, it's always also interesting for us that we see our systems often leads to uh, to companies which a strong stake of, uh, of families. And uh, obviously, uh, these companies are led uh, in a way like we like it, not the short-term effect, not the short-term uh, um, consequence, uh, which you see sometimes in 
and I would say management linked uh, companies where the management want to uh, to optimize its bonus uh, for short term development. But uh, what we like more is is a sustainable development. And um, if I have a look on our portfolio, not only now, but also on the last uh, years, uh, I would say we had always a disproportional high footprint of these companies. Yes, it's typical. It's not, not nothing we want to reach or we have a look on, um, but uh, I would say uh, it happens often. So for the end of our interview, is there anything you want to add about investing in Germany, your approach, something general? No, what I can say to any investor, uh, we, to come back to your to your question, really in the beginning, um, I think a good advice, uh, if I may uh, give an advice, is always to 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 look on long term developments, um, because by nature human's nature is to discuss oh what will happen in ukraine or what will happen with the interest rate and um, you, you in the morning you look in a newspaper or on an online screen and you are affected by the current situation which can change very very uh, fast and i was think investing is something different investing is something you should do really for many years or for decades, you should not uh, invest into a strategy, for example, like ours, with a uh, horizon of less than five or 10 years. Um, stock markets do not work in this, I would say, volatile. Uh, of course, there are traders uh, in the market which like it, but this is this is trading, this is not investing. Investing, and I think this is also uh, an approach of your channel, uh, is uh, something where you should have really a long horizon. This is what I would say as a general uh, hint or advice. And thank you very much for your insights and your wisdom on the German stock market. Thank you. And also for the thank audience. You a lot, thank you. And goodbye. For staying here. Bye bye. As in every video, also here is the disclaimer. You can find the link to the disclaimer below in the show notes. The disclaimer says always do your own work. What we're doing here is no recommendation and no advice. So please always do your own work. Thank you very much.